Okay, today I'm going to show you how to create a part in SolidWorks that when 3D printed will move. Um, it's all going to be printed at the same time and after the supports are dissolved, the part will move without any assembly required. So um, the first thing we're going to do is go up to File and New and I'm going to create a new part. And uh, what we're going to create is just a simple um, gear assembly where two gears mesh together and they're connected by just a simple connector. Um, so the first thing I want to do is actually generate the gear and uh, one of the things that is nice about SOLIDWORKS is the actual toolbox feature. Um, so if we go over and find our toolbox here I can actually select um, a bunch of different types of parts but what I'm looking for here is a gear and here's my spur gear so I'll, I'll right click on it and click create part and over on the left hand side here now I can basically configure the gear and we're gonna leave everything uh, pretty much as the default um, the two important things that we're going to need to remember to calculate the length of our connector are the pitch and the number of teeth. So uh, we have a pitch of 6 and the number of teeth is going to be 15. So I'm going to click the check button here and it has generated the gear um, in the background. I'm going to minimize the screen. So this is the other the part we just created and you'll notice actually at the top here it says it's read only so what I'm going to do I'm actually going to save this part to a folder on my desktop so that I can actually edit it if I ever wanted to so I have a folder called gear assembly and I'm just going to save this part to it now you'll notice the uh, read only has gone away I'm going to minimize that for now and I'm going to go back and create the actual connector we're going to use so on my top plane, I'm going to create an extrude and I'm going to use the slot function. So I'll just drag a line out here, create my slot. Now we're going to put two 15 tooth gears next to each other on this connector and they both have a pitch of six. So the equation for determining the, the, or the center to center distance is actually uh, adding both sets of teeth together so 15 plus 15 is 30 and dividing by 2 times the pitch so 30 divided by 12 is 2.5 and then I'm just gonna give the actual slot here a width of 0.5 inches when I'll hit exit and we'll leave it as a 0.1 inches um, for the height um, now if we go back and take a look at the actual size of the hole here, we can probably find somewhere where it shows it. There's the bore. So 0.3125. Um, now of course if I make the actual pin that it, it uh, mates with the same size, then it'll probably fuse together while printing. So we're going to make it slightly smaller. I'll put one circle over here on the center second circle I'll make these equal and then I will size this as 0.3 and from here I'm going to extrude now the distance I want to extrude um, if we take a look again at our gear our actual let's see where it shows it now we can just measure the thickness here so I'll take a measurement from the top and we can see our distance is uh, 0.25 so one of the most important parts in making sure that a part actually moves is to leave a gap between uh, the, the moving part so I don't want to actually mate the gear directly to the face of uh, the connector otherwise when it prints it'll fuse to the connector I need to leave a gap and that gap uh, that I need to account for is the actual layer resolution of the printer I'm using in our case I'm going to be printing it on a uprint SE plus and the layer resolution is 10 um, 
thousandths of an inch. So I want to leave uh, that gap between the moving parts. So if I'm creating this these pins here, um, and my my gear is 0.25 inches thick, then I need to leave um, 0.01 inch underneath and the same above. So the length of this is actually going to be uh, 0.7. But I'm actually going to mirror both of these uh, features here. So I'm going to divide this by 2, 0.27 divided by 2. And now I'm going to select both of these features. I'm going to just click uh, mirror. And then I'm going to select this top face to mirror and I'm going to use a geometry pattern. So I've created my connector now and I'm going to save this file. From here, I'm going to create an assembly from this part. And I'll click this little thumbtack here to keep it visible because I'm going to add a couple parts. So first thing I'm going to add is my connector. And then I'm going to add two of the gears. All right, and then I can click the check. Okay, so the first mate I'm going to create is to mate the bore with this pin here and then the next one I'm going to select the bottom face of the gear and I'm going to mate that with the this face here now of course the default mate is to actually um, a coincident mate I want to create an offset mate of the layer resolution I had talked about earlier which is going to be 0 0.01 inches so if we go to a front view here you can actually see there's a nice gap between the bottom of the gear and the top of the gear, and that's exactly what we want in order to make this work. All right, so I'll save that mate, and I'm just going to copy the same mate over on this side. First one's good. Select this face, and again, we're going to leave it 0.01 inch gap. Now, to make sure that the teeth are actually going to work um, the way I want, actually use a cool feature in um, SOLIDWORKS that is called physical dynamics. So I'm going to change the transparency of the connector so I can actually see through it. And by grabbing the gear, I can actually move it to a position where it's not intersecting with the other gear. So right about here will work. Now if I actually go up and click move components and turn on physical dynamics, as I move one gear, the other one will move. So this will help you test to make sure that you got the distance correct between the centers. Uh, if it's too close, it'll probably jam, and if it's too far apart, it'll be really sloppy. So we can see here it moves nice and smoothly. So now to send this to the 3D printer, I'm actually going to save this assembly as a SOLIDWORKS part and set in case I want to make changes later, and I'll call this gear assembly. And now I'm going to save this as an STL file. Save as... And then from the drop down, I'm going to select STL. Now, the important thing here is to click options and make sure you have save all components of the assembly in a single file checked. Without that checked, it'll save separate STL files and you won't be able to make this work. Um, so I'll hit OK here, hit save, and now we've created our STL file. Now we're ready to go into the Catalyst program. So uh, this is the program that actually slices up the part um, and sends the file to the 3D printer. It's basically the 3D printer's print driver. Um, I'm going to find the file I just created, which is gear assembly, STL. And uh, I'm going to make a couple changes over here. I'm going to make it sparse low density just so it prints faster. Now the, the most important selection um, in regards to making this work would be our layer resolution. Now my printer has two possibilities for layer resolution. Um, I need to make sure that the layer resolution I select matches the gap I left between the moving parts. Um, if I print it in a lower re layer resolution, that's basically um, going to cause a problem because the gap I left in the software would be smaller than the, the, the layers it's able to print, and it may end up fusing together. So I um, left the gap um, for a 10 thousandths layer slice, so I'll make sure that's my selection and I'm going to go to my orientation tab. Now from here I'm going to use uh, orient selected surface and I'm going to select um, the surface I want to become the bottom surface just to make sure that it's nice and flat. Um, and if I go to a right view here I can actually see the nice gap I left here. So now that I've got it oriented I'm going to process the file and generate 
the tool paths. You can see the red is our model material and the uh, bluish color is our support. And uh, now the nice thing about Catalyst, it allows you to step through each layer um, almost like a doctor would look at an MRI. And uh, so, so some of these tools that were here to orient the part have now changed to layer view. So I'm going to click top. And this is the topmost layer of the part. If I go to a nice view here to give us a better view, as I hold um, page, if I press page up or page down, it'll actually allow me to step through the part. So what I'm looking for is uh, the area where the uh, top of the connector comes in uh, contact with the uh, top of faces of the gear. In fact, it shouldn't come in contact. So we should see a blue layer between the top of the gear and the, uh, the connector, which we do here. So this layer is showing us that the top of the gear is not going to fuse to the top of the connector because you're going to have one layer of support material. And we should see the same thing underneath the gears. So as we move down here, we should see one layer that has basically all support between the bottom face of the gears and the uh, top portion of the bottom connector. Uh, so we do see all that and that's going to help us prove to ourselves before we spend the time uh, printing that it's actually going to work. So from here we'll add the part to our pack and uh, I actually added it twice. Uh, so we have our gear. It's going to, it looks like it's going to take about two hours to print and we'll just hit the print button and in a couple of hours you should have a moving part that you create in SOLIDWORKS.